In this week's edition of Voices of Agriculture, the Pennsylvania Farm Bureau presents Cultivating Farming Knowledge. The program explores a variety of farmer-supported educational outreach efforts designed to inform students about the important role farmers play in feeding, clothing, and providing energy for Americans. Welcome to Pennsylvania Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture. Farmers believe it's vitally important for young people to learn as much as they can about the numerous benefits of farming and food production. One way Pennsylvania farmers do that is through its highly successful mobile ag ed science labs, or what we call ag labs. The ag lab program was created in 2003 due to concerns that young people no longer were identifying food with farmers. Our members within Farm Bureau, those in production agriculture, were finding that when they ask elementary and middle school students, where does your food come from? The answers they got were grocery stores and fast food restaurants. And so our members said we need to do something to try to reconnect them with where their food comes from and the importance of agriculture. The solution was the creation of a program to bring mobile ag ed science labs into schools across the state. Our purpose is to, is to use these labs to educate, educate students, educate the public about agriculture. Our primary focus is the schools, going into the schools, working one-on-one -on -one with the students. During a visit to the St. Joseph School in Mechanicsburg, students were delighted to take a break from classroom learning. It was really different because in a classroom you have to take notes and stuff, but this is more hands-on and you get to do different stuff and like put that stuff together and do different experiments that you wouldn't normally be able to do socially interesting and fun to learn new things. Grove says she was surprised by what she learned. We learned about how you can make uh, plastics and stuff out of corn. Classmate Patrick Walker agreed that the Ag Lab is a fun place to learn. I don't really like sitting in class and listening to a teacher and writing down notes. I like to do an experiment or like do a project. Although students like Patrick enjoy the change of scenery provided by the Ag Lab, teachers are not threatened by its visit. In fact, they are glad students can access the many resources that it brings. It's also great because we do a science project here and they use all the same terminology, the, the, um, the hypothesis, the steps of the scientific method, and it's just a good kind of uh, workout before we really get into our science projects here. Sansone asserts that students know they can have fun when the Ag Lab visits a school and he contends it's a much different and constructive experience than a typical field trip. When you say normal, normal field trips, it, it, the kids just think free for all sometimes. But when we come out here following the scientific method, there is an agenda when we come in. We have a time limit to do it. And they're all real world, real job applications. And it's a great experience for the kids. Meanwhile, fifth grade science teacher Jody Nanke says she enjoys watching her students learn about science through the Ag Lab experiments. I think when we get to kind of deal with the world around us and test things out and see how and why things happen the way they do, I think it, it's just interesting. And especially if you can take an unknown substance and make it grow with water, I mean, what's, what wouldn't be better? One of her students, Tommy Eisenberg, was asked what he learned during the Super Slurper experiment. I learned that, like, many substances have a, a lot of absorbed been properties like sponges and ta paper towels. Nanke says all the bells and whistles of the Ag Lab provide a great atmosphere to learn. I don't have all the cool graduated cylinders and teaspoons and everything right there for the kids, all the different materials, the substances that you use. So it's definitely, I could do a little bit in the classroom, but much more exposure here. A well-stocked ag lab requires a major financial commitment from farmers, Farm Bureau's Friends of Ag Foundation, and donors. And that's on top of the initial cost of purchasing a mobile science lab. To operate it then once we have it from week to week, there are lots of expenses that go into that. We have the hauling of the lab, we have the staffing, the materials, the administration of it as we have six of them that we now have staff that have to organize all of those visits. A major benefit to the teachers and the host school is that an ag lab visit helps them meet state education standards. 
We have aligned all of our curriculum with Pennsylvania's state standards for science and technology and environment and ecology. And those are standards that the state has set that students have to be tested upon and have to prove competency in. And thankfully in Pennsylvania, a lot of our environment and ecology standards have agricultural components to them. Agriculture is the science of farming. Ag Lab teacher Leanne Courtney says a winning formula for the program is that students are learning, although it feels as if they are just having fun. Anytime that a, a kid can learn having fun and not know about it, um, that's, I believe, when they absorb the most because it becomes a, a memory for them that's ingrained in them. Um, so in this case, it just happens to be agricultural science that we're getting them to have fun with. Courtney says her experiences in the Ag Lab have always been positive and can't remember any difficulties with students. We're like a field trip in their parking lot from the second they step on the lab, they're engaged. There's not too much room for um, behaviors because they want to know what this is all about. The program has been so successful that over an 11 year span, it has grown from one ag lab to six ag labs, reaching students in schools in all 67 counties across Pennsylvania we can reach over 100,000 students a year. This past year we had a record high, we were at 170 weeks with our six labs reaching over 106,000 students. While the Ag Lab program teaches students about agriculture during a week-long school visit, students are learning about farming every day at a unique Philadelphia high school. We'll take you there when Pennsylvania Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture continues. Welcome back to Pennsylvania Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture. If you were asked to pick a location where high school kids are learning about farming practices, growing food and raising animals, Philadelphia probably wouldn't be the first place to pop into your mind. But students are intensely learning about agriculture at the W.B. Saul School in the city of brotherly love. At first glance, W.B. Saul looks like any other high school, with students moving from one class to the next and participating in classroom discussions with their teachers. But take a few steps outside and you can see how the school is different, with live animals, crops, and so much more. We still have the every day you have to go to class. Our first half of the day is just uh, academics, and then we go across the street and we get to have fun. People in the Philadelphia area who know about W.B. Saul simply refer to it as the farm school. It's actually an agricultural school which has academics, uh, very rigorous academics, and also has um, an agricultural component with four different types of agriculture. There's food science, animal science, horticulture and landscape architecture, and environmental science. That's Principal Tamara Conaway, who was asked why the kids at Saul enjoy being there. It's project-based learning, so it's, it's hands-on. So 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, you have agricultural classes for two to three hours every day. So you're out doing things, and they're doing something that they love, that they chose. Sophomore Destiny Serrano agrees that the school provides a great learning environment. We get to interact with the animals, with the crops. Um, we get to do a lot of hands-on stuff which is you don't really do in any other high school. She also had high marks for the school's teachers. They're very awesome. Like the teachers here, they teach on point, especially with the animals, the crops, the horticulture, where we learn about like landscaping and stuff. Safety is a major priority at the school, with many teacher hours devoted to getting students comfortable around the animals. I tell the kids, I'm not going to put you in a dangerous spot, but if you're not paying attention to what I have taught you and what you're being told for directions, you could find yourself in a dangerous spot. That's Ag Sciences teacher Gail Koskella, who talks about what her 10th grade class is working on. The focus in this particular quarter of the year with me is livestock quality assurance. So all the issues that are big in the industry right now having to do with um, safe animal handling um, and proper use of medications and biosecurity are all topics that we cover in this class. And since it's fall, that's a time when they're, they, they sometimes get those external parasites. And you guys have noticed they've got some rub marks on them. So that might be because they were itchy. Sophomore Kelly Pearson says when it comes to working with farm animals, you need to follow specific procedures and use teamwork. The girl Cameron over there, she had to uh, like hold the head in a way that he can't like move and I had to put my leg against the sheep 
so that it know that it's safe and that we won't hurt it. Pearson asserted that the task of grooming the sheep is important. If you don't clean them and clip them, they could get diseases and viruses that could spread all over the flock and hurt. Meanwhile, senior Jessica Cornelius says the school is a perfect fit for her. I love animals. I've always wanted to be a vet. This is just something I've always wanted to do. And so there was a school that was going to put me ahead of other kids going into a vet field, then I definitely wanted to be in it. Jessica says she loves working with horses and that it was not by accident that the horse Echo responded well to her driving him. Well, I've been working with him for the last three years, so I hope he would respond well to me. I ride him and I drive him. It's a very interesting relationship. Jessica adds that with so many resources at Saul, there's no reason for anyone to be bored at the school. There's just always stuff for you to do, always stuff, uh, clubs to get involved with. As far as schools go, I think this is a really good school because you get the academic side, but you also get a trade. Students also assist a farm manager with a dairy herd whose milk is sold to a processor. And students help grow and harvest vegetables at the student named Henry Gott Crops CSA, located on the school's property. We start from seed. Um, you know, we can start germinating things in the greenhouse. Uh, they'll, they'll plant uh, either by direct seeding into the ground or transplanting the seedlings. Um, you know, we care for them, maintain them, harvest them, wash them. That's Tara Campbell, the farm educator for Weaver Way's community program, who says coming onto a working farm was a way for students to connect food to their everyday lives. Some of the most interesting things I hear the students say is, oh my God, look at the lettuce. It looks just like it does in the grocery store. And you're like, yes, yep, it does. That's where it comes from. That's where the grocery store gets it from. Food safety and science are also subjects of study on the farm, where students are conducting an experiment on tomatoes. We're um, trying to see the difference between store-bought tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, and um, vine tomatoes. We're trying to see if vine tomatoes have more bacteria. Jessica Cornelius says another bonus at Saul is that all students have the opportunity to get involved with FFA. We get to meet new people, do different things. It's actually a really big organization and we get to take a part of it every day. And I think it's really cool because we get to go to different areas, you get to meet different cultures, interact with different people. In closing, Ag Sciences teacher Gail Coskello says students are learning life lessons working with animals. If they never work with livestock again, what they can learn in my class is going to apply in any career they go into. Look at the situation, look at what motivates the people or the, the, the situation you're working with, and then use that to set yourself up for success. While not many schools have the mission of the Saul School, it doesn't mean their teachers can inspire students to learn about agriculture. Next up, we'll tell you about a program that teaches teachers about farming so they can take what they learn back to the classroom when Pennsylvania Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture continues. Welcome back to Pennsylvania Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture. You can learn a lot about agriculture through books and lab experiments, but nothing quite beats the experience of visiting an actual farm. And that's why Pennsylvania Farm Bureau organized farm tour visits for more than 400 teachers from across the United States who traveled to Pennsylvania as part of the National Ag in the Classroom Conference. Some of the educators visited Boyer Nurseries and Orchards in Adams County. We teach better when we understand it. And so experiencing it gives us a better understanding that we can take back to our students. Um, we can get pictures of us actually doing it and then that promotes interest from the students as well. That's Katie Cavanaugh, a teacher from the state of Washington, who acknowledges hands-on is a great way to learn. You will remember more when you can actually feel it, touch it, experience it, um, when you can tie a story to it, rather than just listening to someone speak about a cherry. Well, let me go pick it, let me go taste it, let me go take it apart. Teachers touring the Hauser Estate Winery in Biglerville had similar thoughts learning about apples grown on the home farm to produce hard cider and grapes that are used in the winemaking process. We learned um, how the product goes from, you know, the farm itself, this process, and then 
put on our tables. We learned about the difference between white wine and red wine and the, and the processing between the two, uh, which is very different, I had no idea. It was amazing because we got to see um, a, a local product, that we got to see the, the, the growing of the grapes and how they harvest them and the process that they go through. Paula Jackson says the conference has provided her with plenty of new ideas to take back to her school. It's been very thought-provoking for my colleagues and I. We're, um, we have an agriculture program in our high school. Not too much comes up in the elementary school and we're all elementary teachers, so um, we're thinking of ways to um, incorporate it into our elementary curriculum. Teacher Katie Cavanaugh says the National Ag in the Classroom Conference has provided teachers with a wide array of new ideas. I've learned so much from other people and I'm excited about going back to my class and trying some of them that I hadn't heard before until this conference. Moving from the farm tours back to the classroom, teachers attending the National Ag in the Classroom Conference in Hershey labeled the conference dynamic because it offers so many valuable seminars and resources. The things that you pick up, the ideas that meet, totally meet common core standards, and you can teach science and social studies within your language arts and all about egg, and it's awesome. That's Angela McCullough, a second grade teacher in the Westchester Area School District and the 2011 winner of the Outstanding Teacher of the Year Award from Pennsylvania Farm Bureau's Young Farmer and Rancher Committee. Meanwhile, Butler County School District 4th grade teacher Denise Shabrinsky, a winner of the prestigious American Farm Bureau White Reinhardt Award, says teachers attending the conference can learn the same way their students learn. That's why the students are in the classroom. The hands-on, uh, the visual aids, the little projects that we do. The teachers need that too because they're students of agriculture. Angela Shoup, who is a learning support teacher in the Armstrong County School District, says the conference allows teachers from all over the country to help each other by sharing ideas. There was a lot of information being shared between the different um, conference attendees and um, adding and supplementing to what the uh, presenters are doing and kind of giving an even more global perspective how things can be applied. Trisha Dillick, a sixth grade teacher from Armstrong School District, admits she was excited to take part in the national conference after having participated in Pennsylvania Farm Bureau's Ag in the Classroom conference several years ago. I was really looking forward to lots of hands-on activities that I can take back to my classroom. Um, I've used many from the original Ag in the Classroom that I went to and was just really excited to get back and to be with more educators, sharing ideas, and really that hands-on learning. Meanwhile, Shabrinsky says she's already worked with local farmers to coordinate a major event at her school. It's basically a, an all-day farm show for our students, uh, 400, approximately 400 students. And what was just a sort of a germ of an, I, germ of an idea and something small turned into a full-day event. As for McCullough, she's become a very popular teacher. A lot of kids request me only because I do a lot of hands-on things and I do know that I do a lot of experiments and those experiments weren't mine. Those experiments are things I've learned here. McCullough was asked why teaching lessons with an emphasis on agriculture work so well with her students. From the time you wake up in the morning to the time you go to bed, your life surrounds agriculture and to be able to talk about the restaurants that they go to and talk about the food that they're having and where it comes from, it ties back into your entire life. Teachers aren't the only people responsible for educating the public about agriculture. That is also the job of farmers. Next up, we'll go to a farm and show you where that's happening when Pennsylvania Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture continues. Welcome back to Pennsylvania Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture. While farmers consistently support education programs to inform the public about what they do and why they do it, often the best way to teach people about agriculture is to bring them onto the farm. And thanks to farmer volunteers from the Mifflin County Farm Bureau, every student in the third grade from every school in Mifflin County has been welcomed to an on-the-farm experience. We want kids to be comfortable on the farm. We want them to enjoy their day. Most kids have never been on a farm before. We want it to be a positive experience for them. And um, we just want to basically educate them um, so that they're more comfortable with agriculture. That's dairy farmer Jamie Glick, who along with her husband David, were key organizers of the event. 
takes about 125 volunteers, it takes about $2,000, and it takes um, a lot of hours of work and dedication to make it possible. The Ag Tour was held at Orbank Farm, an organic operation owned by Preston and Jennifer Yoder, who is a seventh generation farmer. Uh, I just thought it was a chance to uh, share with the kids, the children, um, what we do here on the farm and teach them a little bit about agriculture. For example, young Jacob Kratzer, a third grader from East Area Elementary, says he learned a lot about tractors. It sometimes has a computer which tells it the row and how many seeds or like if it's too rocky or too wet or too dry and how many or how many seeds it's planting or what row it is. Yoder says she's thrilled that the kids are truly getting something out of the experience. I was really surprised at what some of the, the children knew. They asked them at the, at the equine um, station, you know, what, what's in a soybean, and they knew it was, you know, protein. So, yeah, some of, some of the kids are listening. <laughs> Third grader Rihanna Smith says she learned about dairy cows and how they make milk. That it's a Jersey cow, and it's a dairy cow, and it's three weeks old. Ag Tour volunteer and dairy farmer Bill Sellers says the key for him is to have the children interact with the animals. The big thing is to get the kids engaged. I mean, I, I've always liked this one because I said it's easy. They, they like the calves. They want to see the calves. But I always try to get them for the first five or six minutes, you know, get them so they at least learn something before they get a chance to pet the calves. Sellers says people who visit the farm get to see the commitment and care that farmers have for their animals. People don't understand what it takes to take care of an animal. They, you know, they don't understand that you do your best to keep them healthy and happy. And these, these kids learn that you really care about your animals. The school district has responded favorably to the Ag Tour, which has become so popular that third grade teachers in the county have come to rely on the event. We've had teachers tell us they used you know, parts of what they learned today in their curriculum for the whole year. So uh, I think it's, it's very valuable. The Mifflin County event was actually created after studying a successful outreach effort in Franklin County, where dairy farmer Ben Peckman hosted the 24th annual Franklin Fall Farm Fun Fest. In our country, we have the best food and agriculture system in the world, second to none. And uh, the general public gets a lot of information. Some of it's not quite right, and I want to present a very positive, uh, correct view of what uh, farming is. Farmer Micah Myers says even kids who live right next to farms can learn new things by visiting the farm. A lot of their backyards border farms and they have no idea what goes on on those farms and we're here to educate them. Some of the things that cows have in their house, they have, you have in your house, like a bed, they have a kitchen table here, they have a bathroom, and they have air conditioning. Children and adults as well may be surprised that Peckman is generating electricity on the farm. We're taking cow manure, uh, putting it through a methane digester, collecting the methane gas, fueling a biofuel uh, engine which turns a, 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 uh, a generator which is producing electricity. More surprisingly is that some of the visitors at the farm are getting their home electricity from Peckman's farm. All the electricity on our farm is being produced by that generator and then we even have access that we're selling back to the grid and and uh, we're, we're actually supplying probably 40 to 60 homes up the road. Both the Franklin County and Mifflin County events are highly successful and should be around for years to come. This is the only pre-approved um, field trip that the school district offers and we've um, been commended. The superintendent says it's wonderful, it's very valuable and that they're always going to be supportive of this. It's the, the best organized field trip, it's the most educational and the kids, it's their favorite one too. So we feel like it's a win-win the whole way around. Farmers put their time and money behind projects that educate students and the general public about agriculture. And farmers believe the more people know, the more confident they are when they buy food and other products from the farm. On behalf of Pennsylvania farmers everywhere, I'm Mark O'Neill, thanking you for watching Pennsylvania Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture.
This has been a production of the Pennsylvania Farm Bureau. For more information, visit our website at pfb.com.